the reason you have influence is because you have knowledge that you can share and help people out with. This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, the Playbook, and I am so excited to have Neil Patel, the founder of Neil Patel Digital, but really, you are one of the early young entrepreneurs, and I've been blessed to know you for a decade, and you have just done an incredible job of helping people build brands and understand the digital space for over a decade now. Good, thank you, and more so, I'm blessed to know you. Oh, we, it's amazing because... The one thing about the internet today and media and digital media is people don't realize how long it took us to be successful at what we do. Yep. And even though you're still much younger than I am, you started early. It's been years, years and years of building your experience, your skills, your knowledge, your relationships with a, a really strong desire. What advice would you give to any age entrepreneur of how long or the perspective you take of how long it takes to achieve you know at least part of what you're capable of doing i say if you do what your so if your goal is to build a brand a business whatever it may be if you do it consistently each and every single day so for example if you're producing videos or podcasts you don't have to release one each day but if you're working on it coming up with ideas and you're releasing stuff at least weekly, but ideally you should try to do it multiple times a week, if not daily, because it doesn't take long to put up a picture on Instagram or anything like that. And if you do it consistently for three years, you will be that quote unquote overnight success. But it takes three consistent years. And the reason being is the market's now flooded with people and even businesses. And unless people see your brand seven times, it's hard for them to resonate and build that connection, right? In marketing, they call it the rule of seven. And nowadays, social algorithms are much tougher. Five, six years ago, you post something on Facebook, everyone sees it. Now you post something on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, barely anyone's gonna see it because they want you to spend the money on the ads. So for that reason, it takes a bit longer, but give it three solid years. They also, you know, the followings have exponential growth. So. It was interesting when I first started and had 200 followers, I could see the pace where it went from 200 to 400 to 1600. Yeah. And I was telling my work and my wife, I'm a little bit f fearful. Like this is actually working. You know, I was getting advice from Gary V who's great, but everyone's looking at me and go, Dave, you have no, no followers. I said, but my following's not from advertising. I, I did consistent yeah. content, but people are sharing it, which is still, the way to the most inexpensive way is to come up with the best ideas. Yes. <laughs> right. It, because when you get to the point where you get 50,000 views per, per now, those people are now saying, Oh, you got to see this guy. When you have 50,000 people saying you got to see this guy, ads don't even matter. No, they don't. And the beautiful part is when you have 50,000 people saying, Hey, you got to check out Dave or Gary or whoever it is you're also gonna find that they're much more engaged versus if you spent money on ads trying to recruit the same people. Yeah, and then how do you feel about fake followers? One of the things I'm looking at, and I'm not gonna mention any names, you know, my business, they're like, oh, you know, that guy has a million followers. And then I look and they have less, you know, likes. Less and, engagement, like, comments. Yeah, and so, but eventually the algorithms, the, the reason I won't do it is I don't care, I'm not trying to make money off of my following. Right, I'm trying to share, truly believe in, and put faith in the universe that if I share my ideas and help people, what I want comes to me, and that, and it does. I gave away more books than I ever did. You know, I'm launching a new book called Game Time Decision Making, July 15th. All my other books that I've had, bestsellers, I give away for free and pay for shipping. But yet, every month, and one of them is like three years old. Every month, my sales go up on Amazon by giving away one or That's two awesome. books for free. And that's the strategy that I've implored. But what do you think is going to happen to the people that have all these fake followers or bots or what? I don't even know the game because I won't get involved. What's going to happen to them? Yeah, what you'll see is they're going to get screwed. And I know this because I work with the social platforms. So like I get paid by Facebook to go speak at their conferences and they'll take me to different parts of the world. Let's say like Latin America and go speak to hypothetically like the CMO of Coca-Cola Latin America and be like, 
go teach them about online marketing. Because in these regions, online and digital marketing isn't as popular yet as traditional. And because of that, I see how they think about social platforms, where it's evolving, and where they're trying to adjust their algorithms. And from everything that I know from them, their goal isn't to look at, hey, how many followers does someone have and should we push out their content? They're looking at how many followers does someone have and what portion of their followers are engaging. And yeah. if that ratio is high, they want to then see that content out to more people and have it go viral. But if you have a million followers and only a thousand people are engaging, they want to make their algorithms, and they've already started to do this for a while now, where, hey, very few people of their followers are engaging in this content. That means it must not be that great. So let's not show it to any more people. Hmm. So the key isn't to have a ton of followers. The key is to have as many of your followers engage. So if you had a thousand followers, but a hundred percent of them engage in your content, your content's going to go viral. Yeah. And it is funny because you and I have very successful podcasts. We have very successful businesses, but we don't have millions and millions of followers. We, in fact, our following is about the same, yeah. but yet I think you and I make probably more money than most people do that have 10, 20 times the following. And it's really interesting because my strategy was from the traditional world. I was excited years ago, you know, to get a, a big fee to go speak in front of 2000 people. And the cool thing is when I spoke in front of those 2000 small business owners or CEOs or whatever group hired me from that, it would be a year of business. And I'd freak out going, oh my God, these people want me to consult. They have business yeah. development. They have investment. I mean, it was un, I couldn't handle it, right? Yeah. And, and I, I learned from that traditional world. So now it's so interesting because I don't understand why people want to sell themselves short for the short run because those brands aren't going to last when I'm sitting there every day going, wow, I have 50,000 people just watched my little speech. That's amazing. Right? And they're like, now they're DMing me because they're yep. highly engaged. They're like, they're sticking up for me. You know, my favorite comment yesterday, I don't read every comment, but other people stick up for me and they're like, this guy goes, you're just getting all your information from God. And I was like, I hope so. Like, like literally what a, what a great compliment. He thought he was insulting me that I was stealing my information from God. I'm like, what a great compliment, awesome man. I'm like, compliment. I hope the same for you. May, may God give you all your information yeah. as well. So I didn't know I was that powerful. Um, the other side of it too is what's going to happen in the, in the future. You know, it, it is going to be crowded. It's going to be more expensive. Do you think today, and I do, but do you think today is the best time to invest in building your own brand? It is. And what we're seeing is not only does it help you do better in life, you know, from a personal aspect, maybe make you happier, networking with more people, you're getting to know more people, you're learning more, but it also helps in the corporate world. We're finding people who build their brands are getting jobs easier because they have more clout. We're finding people who have a personal brand can more so write their wave or, or their check into the future and they can decide, hey, you know what? I just want to promote a few e-commerce products, come up with my own hair uh, line and make a ton of money. You look at Kylie Jenner, what she's doing. Oh. That's amazing. Yeah. She now, according to Forbes, I believe is a billionaire. Yeah, first young woman billionaire of some sort, like the youngest woman billionaire in America. Yeah, and good for her. Me she too. She leveraged I'm her following. I'm like, that's smart. People can talk shit about the Kardashians or whatnot, but they've done very well from a business aspect. Yeah, and that's interesting because there is two aspects, right? Some people, and I have a lot of friends now that are influencers. And by the way, I don't believe influencing is a job. I think you have to be good at something. And the Jenner, like the Jenner girls and Kardashian girls, they're good business people. They are. Right? And they use their influence. But I think too many kids, it upsets me when, you know, when I was younger and CEO of Lee Steinberg, people were like, oh, you know, I want a job in sports. I'm like, sports isn't a job. Like you want to be a great doctor and be the sports doctor for the chargers. That's cool by me. But now it's even worse. Cause I get people coming up to me and going, uncle Dave, I want to be an influencer. I'm like, influencing is not a job. No, it's you know not how many a years job. and millions of dollars I had to spend to be an influencer. So I could actually have something to influence with. Not just that. The reason you have influence is because you have knowledge that you can share and help people out with. 
And that didn't just come out of the sky. It would be great if it did. I wish, right? You worked like that really guy, hard. Like the yeah. guy said, right? If God just gave it to me. <laughs> exactly. But you you worked your butt off for so many years. You've learned so much. You continually learn more. You continually teach. But you're taking all this knowledge and you're helping other people. Just like how you give out your book and you try to help people for free, you're building an influence and a platform and you're building a brand, not because you want to build a brand, but you're doing it because you're helping people. And that's the key. You can't just say, hey, I want to be an influencer. Well, if you don't have any value to give, you're not going to do well. And even once you get that following, it doesn't mean you're going to do well. Like I look at so many of these people, they come up to me and they're just like, oh my God, I want to be like uh Pew, Pi, the, Ty Lopez, right? Yeah, or whoever it may be. And they're looking at these people on YouTube and they're like, oh, they get like 100 million views. This is amazing. I want to be like them and play video games. I'm like, and yeah, you see them with all these followers, but just because someone has a massive amount of followers, it doesn't mean they make that much money. And it doesn't mean you can make a living off of it. Sure, you may find some people like the Logan Pauls of the world who are making good money. For but that's now. like, yeah, exactly. And that's only like 0.01%. The reality is you're much better off doing something, solving real problems like you are, and you may have one-tenth the following, and I don't mean it in a bad way, but that one-tenth is worth 10, 20 times more. That's exactly right. And you know, to that point as well is that as we become influencers from the skill, our skill sets, there's still traditional business to be had. Yep. Right. It's not you you won't see me just paid to to wear something or what whatever that is. Um Moving forward too, I'm worried about the fact that these things change quickly. Very quickly. Right? I do traditional business, so it's never gonna change. The audience will always be whether I'm standing on a stage yes, uh, or a virtual stage, and that's what makes, for me, the digital side so beautiful because I look at it as a digital stage. My job is to capture what I do during the day to give the lessons and amplify the lessons. Now, instead of 2,000 people, I can amplify it to 4 billion on the internet yep. and attract what I want. But I want advice from you, and I'm sure so do the listeners and viewers, the perpetual side of it, right? This is where Logan Paul and, and the Kardashians are gonna have difficulty. The Kardashians have such a huge following, I doubt they will, but yeah. they could. When Disney puts out Mickey Mouse, Right, yeah. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse gets 470 million views on YouTube, right? Because it's a really good idea. Yeah, we know it resonates with children. Correct. When I put my stuff out to business people, like Napoleon Hill, I get his emails every day. He's yep. dead. Great advice. I, yeah. I I can't wait to get my one Napoleon Hill advice for the day. It's perpetuated. Yes. What are these people going to do that? you know, have musically songs and yeah, they have 5 million followers today, but those followers are going to turn, you know, 16, they're going to turn their attention to somebody else that has a, a better, better content because that's just instant content. What you and I deal with is perpetual business and content. What happens to the, those kind of blips, the vanilla ices of the internet? The, the vanilla ices of the internet will make their quick buck and they can do well. And it may last longer than most people think because who knows when it's going to end. But the moment you see things like recessions and the economy starts tightening up, you'll start seeing those guys start fading away. And if you look at, let's say, the music industry, yes, there's a lot of talented musicians out there. Don't believe me, right? Watch The Voice or American Idol. You see so many up and coming people with great talent. But those people who are getting their 10 minutes of fame and they're monetizing and after they slowly stop producing anything, and it doesn't have to be a music industry, it's any industry. Some of these people are just famous for creating some funny meme um, on Instagram or YouTube and they're making all these money from like these tea companies posting a picture, but it fades. And the reason we've seen it fade is from a business aspect, People were paying, like we work with large enterprises and we see them how they're spending money, paying all these influencers, getting them on board. And these influencers weren't worth much uh, or not worth much, but these influencers didn't have a specific skill set and they weren't charging much, but then they started charging more and more. And now these companies, they went from someone pitching their product and then making two, three times the ROI to now, I know some businesses who are paying the Kardashians to promote their product and they're like, I spent 100000 or 200000 and I only got a 30% return on my money. So they're losing money. Yep. 
And it doesn't matter who you are, how famous you are, this stuff's going to die down. No one's going to spend more than what they're making. You got it. And that's where it's interesting to me because I've always followed the money, whether it's professional sports, the NFL. The, that's why these sub leagues don't work because yeah. I follow the money, right? There's too much money when you look at the NFL and what they spend it on. I follow the corporate money. And yeah, they experiment and they have so many dollars that people think I have an individual influencer and I'm able, I'm Coca-Cola. Throwing a million dollars at a Kardashian is nothing to Coca-Cola. It's a dollar. It, it literally is a rounding year. It's like it's interest, a in a, year. interest in an account for a and day. And yet, if you're an influencer and Coca-Cola gives me a million dollars, in my mind, I'm all, this is forever. Yeah. Well, what's going to happen is the big companies, like they always do, they're going to figure out how to maximize the medium. They're going to figure out how to maximize the marketing. And they're going to figure out how they can hire their own influencers at a salary and utilize in the price. What's going to happen is they're going to build up the market where they're going to own the ad spaces, the ad dollars, yep. right? You don't see a Dave Meltzer. Actually, you did see one at Barclays, but most because I'm very creative. But most of the time, you don't see a Dave Meltzer billboard at the Barclays Center, right? Yeah. In the Oculus. Yeah. Right. Because Dave Meltzer can't comp compete in the traditional side with Coca-Cola. No, but someday the same thing's gonna be true about the internet and people are gonna be in trouble. So spend your money now to build that audience and put out really good content or else you're gonna go to the wayside. You are, because what's gonna end up happening in the next few years, and it's already starting to happen, the Facebooks of the world, the LinkedIns, the Googles, these platforms, they don't want other people making the money. They built up the platform, they control the audience, they want those dollars going to them. So you're better off building up your brand right now creating real value so that, that way when things change and the money stops flowing like it used to at least you've built up a real community you provide real value and you can continually make money over time yeah and we see that with amazon yes right it's so much because we both have worked with amazon for years and you know as consultants and as customers and clients and all of that i'm amazed you know bezos and his group are so good at cannibalizing all the revenue. Yes. You know, like just recently, account managers. If you were a top account, a top seller, you always had an account manager. Now they're charging $2,500 a month for your account manager, right? They're just figuring out every, and if you don't think every that's gonna happen thing. on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, it's gonna happen. Yep. And, all right, let me switch gears a little bit as we're coming to the end, because I'm really curious about something that I believe in. You grew up with, parents that told you keep your stuff private yes right? and that to you meant don't stand in front of a ferrari and a mansion you know luckily that you could own but these guys on the internet are standing in front of jets and cars and houses they don't own telling and selling you know get rich quick manipulative yeah. schemes off the stage yeah. of the internet you've been taught and told and you've never you've been a radically humble guy i believe in illuminating though your personal pain, suffering, and struggle, and how you got through that to make yourself better. Are you someone now, I, you've always been very private, but do you share some of your own internal struggles publicly to help people? Or are you still, I believe in illumination, right? I yep. talk about my bankruptcy. I talk about, you know, I yep. was a manipulator. Do you, you know, you are much more closed than me, but do you think that's a, a good strategy? With the stuff that I'm doing with Illumination or is it something you're looking at doing yourself? So what you're doing, I, in my viewpoint, it humanizes you. It allows more people to connect because the reality is, is when someone comes off the street, they see you, they talk to you, they won't get to where you are in life right away. It takes a lot of hard work. And even <laughs> then, even if they put in the hard work, there's a slim chance that they'll be a successful you. And I don't want that to deter anyone else from trying and Me succeeding too. in life, but that's just the reality. Most people do not succeed, at least from a financial level. I agree with you, and I believe in the same concept in which there's no point in taking pictures in front of Ferraris or mansions, but what is great is talking about your mistakes, where you went wrong, where you struggled, because by showing that, not only does it humanize you and it connects you with more people, it also shows people lessons that they can learn and mistakes that they can avoid and it helps them improve their odds of doing better. Which is so cool because when I first met you over a decade ago, I walked away and you were so young at that time. Yeah. I said, man, that guy shared so much of his dummy tax with me. You know, even D-Rock and Gary, we were in New York and D-Rock pulled Justin, who's my camera, you know, he's my D-Rock 
Yeah. Just, just Stone, I'll call him. <laughs> he has a D Rock. I got a Just Stone. <laughs> but like in 10 minutes, he popped up my Instagram and gave us, just like you did in here, don't pay for my dummy tax, guys. This is what you guys should be doing. Here's yep. a box you could buy. Here's this with and share your, your accounts. Um, you're so open and abundant, right? And I believe most successful people believe there's enough of everything for everyone. And we want to encourage everyone, no matter what level your potential is at. Yeah. And I love people pursuing their potential consistently. I always joke around, the closest I've come to my potential was being an average Division three football player. <laughs> and I wish in business I could live up to my potential as much as I did in football, even though my potential was much lower and less recognizable. Um, for you, what legacy? You know, you're so young and you, you have a vision of, the, I think, the fastest growing opportunities in America. What legacy do you want to leave, at least when you get to my age, if not farther? So the way I look at legacy is um, I all I want to do is I've done OK financially and I have a personal foundation and all I want to do is just help other people and make the world a better place, uh, mainly with entrepreneurship in the United States and education. And then overseas, we'll do things with like eye surgeries or uh, wells and uh, cleft palates and AIDS and stuff like that. So we pick our causes based on the region. And I don't care about people knowing what I did or who I impacted. As long as the money can be used for good and it helps make other people's lives better, I'm happy. That's awesome. Because 11 years ago, Neil came to a launch party with me. And that's where we came up with our motto and launched it. Make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. And yes. As someone who co-mentors with you and is, is a big fan of yours and just appreciate your support over the years and hope that I've been some sort of influence in a business no, you've sense. you've been amazing. Been trying. I've but been blessed to know you. Vice versa. This has been just a milestone in my career to have you on here. And I just thank you and hope you and wish that you keep continuing to inspire others, to inspire others, to be happy because that's truly what you do. Thank you. Right on. Well, I got Neil Patel with Neil Patel Digital, the founder and legend, even though he's still got a long way to go, with Dave Meltzer's Entrepreneur, The Playbook. Hey, if you enjoyed learning about digital marketing and branding with my boy Neil Patel, the genius, you got to check out Michael and Lauren from The Skinny Confidential. My advice would be to, to pick a platform and niche down on a platform and completely become obsessed with that platform and use that as a foundation to launch more brands and to become popular on other mediums.